Beautiful. Now, I'm reading from Luke chapter 15 and uh, from verse 11. I want to talk about the lost son. The lost son. I feel like this morning, God is calling a lot of lost people. You know, you used to love Jesus. You used to go to church. You used to spend time in the presence of God. And God is saying you are his lost son. You are his lost daughter. And he wants to call you back. And that is why Pastor Lee sang that song, you must be quick to understand. You must be quick to obey. It's just basically the entire Luke chapter 15 verse 11 to 24. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 15, the Bible says, verse 11, then he said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, 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 give me the portion, the portion of my, of your, of my goods or something. One of those. Anyway, let me read. Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth unto me. So he divided to him his livelihood. The father divided to him his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possession with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there was a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, So many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and rain and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fattened calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Now, I want to share with you about the lost son and you can give uh, your message, the message, a subtitle of come back, come back, come back. Many, many years ago, I had walked away from the Lord and I had a dream um, whilst I was sleeping. And in the dream, my father, my biological father called me and he said, come back home, come back home. When I woke up, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, that is God calling you back to himself. And I feel strongly in my heart that God is calling people back to himself. People who used to have a relationship with God. I came to realize some time ago that a lot of people used to have a relationship with God. A lot of people used to go to church. A few months ago, some people said, we did not leave God, we left the church. But I want you to know that you cannot love God and not love the church. And you can, you can actually love the church and not love God, but you can never love God and not love the church. The problem with you, because the church is the bride of Christ. When you have a deep relationship with God, you are drawn to serve him and to love him and to serve others. And therefore, God is calling a lot of people, come back, come back home. 
And I want us to glean some lessons from Luke chapter 15 about the prodigal son, the lost son. What does this scripture teach, teach us and why is God calling us back? A lot of people used to have a deep relationship with God. They used to pray. They used to, to, to preach. Ask your neighbor, are you the one who used to preach? You look like the one who used to preach. Some of you are not even talking to your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, are you the one that used to preach? Because pastor is saying somebody used to preach. I, some of the people you are seeing here, they used to pray. They used to pray in the church. Hey, I, I, have, a, I have a certain friend, a caddy, a caddy, one of the caddies who carry golf clubs. This caddy used to be a leader in the church so one day he was showing me his pictures he was taking a picture with a bible today he takes pictures with cigarettes <laughs> and people have walked away from the lord it is on sunday it is on tuesday it's a day of prayer you're supposed to be praying but you're in vasha watching safari rally which you don't even know where they are coming from and where they are going. And who is driving? You are just there. When you ask who wants a rally, you, you say, Atazijui. Nigarigani lishinda, Atazijui. Ninani mushindi, Atazijui. You are high like a kite. And you, you used to know God. You used to have a fellowship with God. You used to be serving in the church. I remember I went for a certain um, a funeral service. And after I preached, one of my friends that I, I, I have played golf with, came, the wife came and said, Do you know this one used to be an elder in the church? Hey, point your neighbor and say, Do you know this one used to be an elder in the church? Please, some of you are not obeying my instructions. Say to your neighbor, you used to be an elder in the church. <laughs> so today, I come as a messenger from heaven. To tell you like the prodigal son. You must come back to your father. You must come back to God the father. Somebody say, I'm coming back to God the father. So what does this story teach us? Number one, this story teaches us that the world contains two types of people. It contains two types of people. Number one, the obedient people or the obedient children. And number two, the rebellious children. Obedient or rebellious children. The Bible says a certain man had two sons. I want to submit to you that you cannot be the rebellious and the obedient at the same time. When you walk away from the Lord, you become the, the rebellious child. When you follow God, you become the obedient child. So the Bible says a certain man had two sons. Now, there are two types of children. Not everybody is all good and not everybody is all bad. Not everybody, ladies and gentlemen, is going to heaven. Neither is everybody going to hell with you. You know, a lot of people who are rebellious against God, they say, Sis, you want any water Dhambi? My friend, when it is judgment time, it will be you and you alone. You hear some men saying, Nilituma mama kanisa akaombe. I am telling you, my brother, when we get to heaven, which is not many days from now, you are not going to say, my wife prayed for me. You must have a personal relationship with God. So there are two types of people, obedient and rebellious people and rebellious people are many hey even now as i'm preaching you are rebelling i'm telling you tell your neighbor 
kila saa sasa nashinda nikiongelesha huu you are already rebelling say hello to your rebellious neighbor say tuko wengi <laughs> ladies and gentlemen do not think do not think, think that everyone is going to heaven Now, do not think that everyone is also going to hell everyone has to choose their final destination for themselves number two, so you must decide am i an obedient child of god or am i a rebellious child of god number two, the second thing you learn from this scripture is that rebellious children turn away from god rebellious people turn away from god even your rebellious children at home they turn away from you rebellion has a way of becoming self independent or independent and you become somebody who does not need god you don't need people you don't need god you don't need anybody you say mimi maisha ni yangu wewe shukulika na yako mimi si 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 pangwingwi have you met those people oh, yeah. eh oh, yeah. the young people nowadays they say maisha ni you know when when sue was giving a testimony she said i have a hoarse voice but i'm a lady and i said she can easily say i identify as a man <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> Nowadays rebellion. Ha! People are say, I, I saw somebody say I identify as a cat. Another one was saying I identify as a wolf. So she, she speaks wolverine, wolverine. Woo! Rebellion. People who become rebellious turn away. They turn away from God. So the Bible says that the younger son, verse 13, the younger son, he gathered all together and he took his journey. He left his family. He left his father and he went away. Far away. You can be in church and you left God. You are rebellious. You left God. You, some of you are out there because you are rebelling against God. You are a lost son. You are a lost daughter. You are you are, you rebel. You just rebel. Rebellious people cannot be advised. Rebellious people cannot be rebuked. Rebellious people cannot be told come at nine. Rebellious people cannot be told don't do it. They do what they want to do. Maisha ni yangu. Wewe shukulika na yako. Mimi, mimi, mimi. Si, si. <laughs> hey I am here to tell you that many people turn away from God in their youth they turn away from God in their old age they turn away from God you turned away from God because you are a rebellious person you used to be committed you used to love God you used to say I cannot touch that I cannot do that but when rebellion entered your heart it entered have you seen those movies where something enters somebody and the person changes yeah somebody was timid you know this guy of superman is called who huh clark kent he's so timid until something enters him and then all of a sudden his eyes are removing fire. He's cutting irons with his eyes. Oh. Hey! You used to be nice. Nowadays you argue about everything. You have rebelled and turned away from the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1 says, Remember now thy creator. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. It says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come. Before the difficult days come. And years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. The Bible also says in Proverbs 22 verse, verse 15, 
foolishness. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 verse 15, foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of correction will drive it away far from him. Ladies and gentlemen, from this story you learn that rebellious people turn away from God. Somebody say God. Number three, another lesson we learn from this scripture is that when you are rebellious, you forsake God and you embark on a self-destructive journey. You forsake God and you embark on a self-destructive journey. The Bible says in Luke 15, 13, not many days after, the younger son gathered all that he had all together and he took his journey. Now friends, Marafiki, eh? are you listening to me? Wapendwa uko juu mnanisikiliza? Oh yes, uko chini mko sawa? Now listen to me. It does not take long for foolish people to embark on a self-destructive journey. When you walk away from God, when you stop fellowshipping with God, you have embarked on a self-destructive journey. It doesn't look like it. But many years from now, remember Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1. It says that there will be days when you shall have no pleasure in your life. You shall have no joy. You shall have nothing to be celebrating about. Because you have distracted and destroyed your life. It didn't take a long time for this young son who is lost. To begin his downward journey to the regions of darkness. There is a way, the Bible says, that seems right to a man. But the end of that way is death. That way looks okay with you. You look, you're, you're doing well. And by the way, I don't know what enters people when they get money. Before you had money. You used to be in Keshas, praying. You even used to speak in tongues. Maka, Maka, Maka. You used to pray in tongues. You used to say, you used to even, when you're talking to the pastor, you put your hand at the back of the same, yes, pastor. Shalom, pastor. But when you got money, you are rarely seen in the presence of the Lord. You are rarely seen. You say, I will watch from the house. You have forgotten about the days where you didn't have a TV. You say, you didn't have Wi-Fi. Now, you see, uh, now I'll watch from the Kunabaridi. Ah, and Tatuma and Pesa. We are watching you online. Hey, I think this side is a, a, a lot of these guys on this side are the ones. Eh? Nikama nyindi watu your style. I'm here to tell you, friends, God is telling you that you, will, you, have, en, you have embarked on a self destructive journey. And guess what God is saying? Come! Come back! I need you! I love you. The Bible says the man, the old man, the father of this son used to look outside his field to see whether his son is coming back. For years, he would go out and, and look to see whether his son is coming back. God has been coming out to check on you to see, are you coming back? But every day, we say, Leo, ni See, Leo, see, Leo. One, one of these days, one of these days. Unajua mimi nilikuwa nacheza drums kwa kanisa. Ah, we and leo nilikucheza tu. Mimi nilicheza miaka yangu nikamaliza. Ah! You're not serious. Tell your neighbor you're not serious. You asubuhi ni hangover mtu wangu. The Lord has
has sent me to tell you that rebellious people, they embark on a self-destructive journey. Yes. Look at Proverbs chapter 21 verse 16. Don't worry, I'm about to finish. Just one more hour. <laughs> Proverbs 21 verse 16. What does it say? A man who wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the assembly of the dead. You are not reading. Wait, wait, wait. Clear your throats. If the throat is yours. <clears throat> Can we read the scripture together? One, two, three. The, goes, the Bible says. Uh-huh. You used to believe this gospel. You used to believe in Jesus. Now you're saying, but easy V2. But you used to believe in going to church. You used to believe in Jesus Christ as a savior. But now you have wandered away from the understanding. The Bible says you, you will rest in the assembly of the dead. Give me another version. GNT. Look at GNT. This is another version. Everybody, are you alive? I feel like I'm speaking to myself. Are you sure? Is it that cold? Are you here? Okay. One, two, three. The Bible says death. Death is waiting for anyone who wanders away from good sense. <laughs> now, the gospel is not good sense to you. You have wandered away because you have become a rebellious son. Isaiah 53, come back. Tell your neighbor, come back. Have you, have you touched your neighbor? Have you touched your neighbor since we started? Okay, touch your neighbor. We start with touching before we box. Touch your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, come back. Come back. Look at what the Bible says. Look at what the Bible says. Um, Isaiah 53, verse 6. Verse 6. Quickly, brother. The Bible says we, can we all to get, read together? All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Speaking about Jesus. Give me another version. Another version quickly. It says, all of us, can we read together? All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths. To follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Come back. God is calling you to come back. You have gone astray. Come back. Amen. Number four. What do we learn? From this story. I'm preaching. Yes. I'm preaching. <laughs> Hey. You guys, you are, you are serious, Anna. Ni mwavali ya suti leo. Ni walete tu hii message ni kuambie. Come back! Come back! Number four, we learn that people go as far from God as possible. From this story of the prodigal son, we learn that people go far from God as far from God as possible when they are filled with the spirit of rebellion. When they are filled with the spirit of rebellion, they go far out. You, you don't want anything to do with God. You don't want preaching. If you go to a, to, 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 to a wedding, when it is preaching time, people walk away, they start calling. If you go to a barrio, they do many things. 
Then they say na kanisa msichukue wakati mrefu. Kanisa tumewapatia dakika 20. But they have been doing all these many things. They have even been lying about the dead person. Some of them have been crying crocodile tears. <laughs> But when it is preaching they say kanisa. Or when it is prayer time, na usiombe sana. Because when people rebel against God, they want to be as far from God as possible. Even for you to come, you are to be promised satano. Satano tutakuwa tumemaliza ukasema ah okay. I'll come. Because your heart is far from God. Koko! Na Mungu akoko! Hata maombi yako ya asubuhi ikipita dakika mbili. Wewe 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 uko karibu sana na Mungu. You wake up in the morning you say Lord I thank you for my cat I thank you for my wife uh, my wife I'm not sure but Lord I thank you for my children I pray that you give me money today in Jesus name maombi ya pesa ndio unapenda This young man the prodigal son when he received his goods he went he wanted to be far from his father as possible He wanted to be far from God. So the Bible teaches us from that scripture that he took a journey into a far country. He went to a far country. Far. Far. Hata nikipreach sahi you are playing candy crush. You are far. As I'm preaching, you are responding to a message you are saying iko karibu kisha. Umenunua wine gani? You are far. And the Lord sent me here today my brothers and sisters to tell you come back. Come back home. Rebellious people, they want to be as far from God as they possibly can. They want to be as far from church as possible. They want to be as far from prayer and as far from the Bible as possible. Your Bible. Oh. If it can give a story, you have never opened it. It is dusty. I remember the story of a young man who was sent by his mother to college and the mother gave him a Bible. I think it is even Kevin Hart. He was given a Bible by the mother. And when he went to school, he was broke. And when he was broke, she, he kept on calling his mother, "Mom, I need some money." And the mother used to say, "Read your Bible." And he says, "Me, I don't want Bible. I want money." So, mo, mo, many of you just say, I, "I I don't want Bible. I want money." Always. <laughs> I I don't want prayer. I want money. Missy pastor ni some bible. And he kept on saying that he was broke, he was broke until one day he said, "Let me read this bible." And when he opened the bible, there were thousands of dollars inside the bible. I want you to know today, if you come back to God, he has treasures in you in the bible. He has treasures for you in the in prayer. He has treasures for you in your relationship with him. Oh yes. Some people begin to rejoin church when they are getting older. Because they are looking for a church to bury them. Nimeanza kuzaeka lazima niende kanisa. Nani atanizika? You're a burnt offering. Umechoka ndio unarudi kwa Mungu. Hata tukiimba ushikanishi. What are you turning to? Open the eyes of the blind. 
You see people jamming. Like you. None like you. Well, go even. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. Nobody like you. None like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God is greater. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. You can't sing those songs. Wewe unajua na iwe iwe sambwe ile siku ya mwisho ulikuwa kanisani. Sit down. I'm here to tell you ladies and gentlemen, come back. Come back. People who walk away from God they go as far as possible. Yeah. Look at Psalms 37 33 uh, 73 verse 77. I'm finishing. Verse 27, Psalm 73, verse 27. Quickly, the Bible says, "Give me a lighter version." It says, "Those who desert Him, those who desert Him." Oh, come on, somebody! Are you seeing it on the screens? Those who desert Him will perish. For you destroy those who abandon you. Those who desert God, they will perish. The Bible says, "For He destroys those who abandon Him." Hey, number five, another lesson that we learn from this prodigal son is that many people are wasting their lives. Many people are wasting their lives. Yes. This young man, he wasted his substance. Verse 13. He says he wasted his substance. You're wasting your life. You know, one day you'll die. You might be 90, 100 as you wish. You might be 40, you might be 20. You might be 35, you might be 60. But one day you'll die. And let me tell you when you die you will give an account of what you did with your life. And surprise the car you drove will not matter. The house you lived in at oh when I was alive I built a mansion like Luke the one who was here. He said I I built my girlfriend a mansion. I had a Kisumu girlfriend that I bought cars and death by the way death is sudden is a mystery and when you die i know you might not believe it you will give an account of what you did with your life will you be a wasteful person someone who will stand before god and have wasted all that you had you have wasted all that you had ladies and gentlemen i submit to you that When you walk away from God, you waste your life. You know a certain man his father died and he lived him with a big mansionette in West Africa. And he used to drink a lot. So when his money finished, he decided to remove one of the air conditioners of the house and he took it to the barman. and he said how much are you going to buy this air conditioner they agreed on the price then he said i'll be coming here to drink as i drink you deduct so the first air conditioner finished then he was told your money is finished then he went and removed another one and another one i was told of somebody here in nairobi people take cars to him cars and they say i'm drinking on this car until the day i finish so they buy alcohol 45000 80000 
Sheree. Then the man just keeps the car. Sells the car. He gets money. Somebody else. He's really happy with these guys. <laughs> they are bringing in cars and houses. I'm telling you, and land. One guy, he was just dividing land. He was saying, okay, this land for drinks. Wasting your life away. Hey. When you walk away from God, that's what you do. Number six. Rebellious people, like everyone else, will encounter crisis and trouble. I know you don't look like you have trouble now. But like everybody else, there will be a time you will encounter trouble. The Bible says there arose a mighty famine. Verse 14. And this guy who was rich and doing well began to be in want. Everybody who is in this world, there will be seasons where there will arise a mighty famine. Now, I want you to know that God allows trouble to try and catch your attention. Rebellious men will encounter the storms of life that everyone on this earth experiences. These storms are uncontrollable. They are circumstances that you cannot control. No one can control or manage that trouble. If you have never experienced it, keep on living. Because there is coming a mighty famine in your life. And instead of waiting for a mighty famine, God is saying, come. Come back to me. That I may change and transform your life. So this young man teaches us that people who are far from God, God uses trouble to bring them back to himself. I have seen, you know, how I got saved because of trouble. Me. Yeah. I was experiencing a lot of trouble. <laughs> hey! I was experiencing trouble. The first trouble I had is that I had been suspended from school, high school. So I came home. I went through a lot because my father is, is I don't know either he's a military man. I don't know how he is. He's, he's, he's like dictator. <laughs> when I was um, suspended, you know, a lot of people when they are suspended, they stay at home. Me, I was told, no. No, 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 no. Let me show you what you'll be doing. <laughs> and I was taken to the, the uh, Mujengo. So I thought I was taken there as a supervisor. <laughs> so I was in the Mujengo supervising with my hands in the pocket. Then my father arrived. I don't know whether he slapped me or he kicked me. One of those. He said, no. Toa hizo misumari. Beba ile mawe pelekea ule fundi. Ah! Can you imagine my size? Then. Because now. Nimekula kula. Pastor Masi has cooked for me. <laughs> but that time I was small. And I'm supposed to carry a stone for six by six or nine by six. Nili bebas kumbine ni kasema nita soba. Shida. I'm telling you. Kutoa msumari kwa mbao. Kwa. Kwa. After umefanya. You see it looks easy. But if you're doing that the whole day. You get blisters. You get what. When, and it's out in the sun. I was ready to go back to school. Iyo siku wakoka. So, then I went back to school. Then Sasa, she dengile kaikucha. Now, I was caught with drugs. Now I was told you are being suspended. Expelled, yeah, expelled. In kama muliku hapo, okay. Expelled. Sasa, yondo ilifanya, ni okoki. Because, now, I wondered. Did I end up? I had stress for the whole weekend. 
I had broken my my hand had been broken by a few friends of mine who were trying to friends who were trying to steal from me. Yeah, so we were fighting in the streets, and then I fell and I broke my hand. So I used to transport weed in the in the cask uh, cast. Yeah. It's good to go to Nadunda, my friend. Squeeze at Amudunda, squeeze him on a Tembeakama, my zombie. Those days we used to go to Nadunda. Yeah, we have a key cast like in Nadunda on a seminar as a Kupiga Naikitu. Hey! When I thought about the problems that are about to come to me, I just said, Jesus come into my heart. <laughs> some of you, some people have had to go through a lot of trouble to give their life to Christ. But this young man had to go through a lot of trouble. That is when he's, he surrendered and he said, I'm going to go back to God. Verse number seven, uh, two more then we finish. Number seven says that rebellious people do not look for God for solution. To their problems. You see, this guy when he rebelled against God and he was in trouble, instead of going back to God, he started looking for people to help him. This young man, the Bible says, he joined himself with a citizen of the country. Rebellious people, they try to do everything else apart from God. So they try to look for friends to solve their problems. They try to look for aunties to solve their problems. They try to look for their friends in America to solve their problems. But I want you to know that the Bible teaches us in Psalms 146 verse 3 put not your trust in princes nor in the son of man in whom there is no help. When God is calling you back nobody will help you but him. Number 8 Another lesson we learn from this scripture is that no one can help you in this world. A lot of you think that people should help you, but I am here to tell you that is called entitlement. Nobody owes you anything in this world. Not even your father, not even your mother. Oh yes. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, nobody owes you anything. Yes. Somebody, I, I think it was Ezekiel Mutua who said that these people who keep saying I'm from a poor background. Once you hit 30, you are the background. <laughs> he said, don't be telling us all the time. You know I'm from a poor background. You know I'm from a poor background. He says, once you hit 30, you are the background. I want you to look at your neighbor who looks 30 and above and tell them you are the background now. Stop using excuses. A lot of Kenyans, a lot of Africans are entitled. If my mother would have helped me, if my father would have helped me, if my uncle would have helped me, if my cousin in America would have helped me. My cousin in America is a bad cousin. Why can't he help me? My friend, your cousin also has problems. Your mother also has problems. It is time for you to arise and understand your help is in the name of the Lord. Nobody owes you. Are you listening to me? Take up your responsibility. Because nobody owes you anything. This young man, he teaches us that no one will help you. Only God will help you. Some of you, ukiomba mtu do, akupatie kidogo na sema hii itoshi. My friend, I'm here to tell you, wake up. Wake up. Everybody has problems. And the prodigal son teaches us that no one is here to help you. He had to come back to his senses. And you must also come back to your senses. Adi, adi, mbona, mbona una, una, una kunyo, adi unajua. Niko stressed. Kwa nini? Unajua, mama yangu wa mekatuwa kuditumia pesa. Shut up! 
ungewe nikimtukia 40 my friend you are 40 you are 40 and you are still in your mother's house come out hey sit down i'm about to finish the bible says that no man could help him no man could help him and i'm here to tell you only god will help you Number 9 another lesson you learn from this scripture number 9 is that when things go bad from bad to worse it is supposed to turn you towards God so look at your neighbor tell your neighbor things are going from bad to worse to turn you back to God oh you are not talking to your neighbor tell your neighbor neighbor your problems are supposed to bring you towards God amen And the last one number 10 the next lesson we learn is that it is time to repent. It is time to repent and to turn to God. It is time to repent and to turn to God. This young man said, "I will arise. I will arise. And I will go back to my father. And I will say to my father, I have sinned against heaven and before you." This man decided to repent. He decided I'm not going to suffer like this and I have a father. I'm turning back. Repentance is turning back. Is a U-turn. You are going in this direction, then you say, "Hey, this is not the right direction." And then you turn. That is you have repented. <clears throat> That's what repentance is. I I was moving in this direction. There is a way that seemeth right to a man but it leads to death. Then I've realized this is not my life and I'm turning back. And I'm going back to God. This is what this young man said. The Bible says he came back to his senses. You know what I believe? I believe nobody changes because they have been preached to, because they have been spoken to. They must come back to their senses. People say, "Oh, pastor, ongelesha nani?" abadilike you can never talk to anybody to change people have to come back to their senses you have to say hey i think i'm not going in the right direction lazima uamke uamke useme hey what's happening how am i living my life this is not good i'm turning back yeah not tomorrow i'm turning back now this guy he decided i'm going to my father now i don't care not next year not next week i'm going to my father now i am going to tell him i don't need to be a son let me be a servant in your house at least i'll eat i'll still shall have a roof over my head let me go back to my father and ika kakainuka what wengi wana they don't repent because they are afraid of shame this guy was not afraid of shame A lot of people don't give their life to Christ. They are afraid of shame. This guy did not care what they are going to say. Matangari chafu ananuka ni po kama ni pig pig ananuka pig machakula za pig ameenda is going back home. Yeah. And the father used to come out every day and look. And this day the father came out I think it was on 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 third when when is today second july and the father came out and he was looking and he saw John coming he saw Margaret coming and the father said oh my god oh my god oh my god i've been waiting for a moment like this oh my god he's coming back he's coming back I am glad my son is back. And the father had and the, and I'm sure he was coming and the father was also running towards him. He was running towards him. He was saying my son, my son is coming back. He was just running, running towards the son. And and and, 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 and I think this is my son. Let me go to my son. And he was coming and they were running and they were running and they were running and he came and he embraced him and he said oh, my son my son was lost but now now he is found he 
said, this is my son. I've been waiting for you. You are dirty, but you are home. You are broken, but you are home. Come back home. And he said, clothe him. Clothe him. Give him a nice cloth. He said, give him a nice cloth. Give him a nice cloth. He said, clothe him. Sit down so that the people can see. He said, ah, ah, ah. I don't care. I'll cover your shame. I'll cover your shame. He said, I'll put a ring on your finger. I'll put a ring on your finger. He put a ring on his finger. He said, give him some shoes. He put him some shoes. And he said, from now on, whatever shame you had, I'll cover it. Because God doesn't care what you have been doing. God doesn't care where you've been. God doesn't care who you've slept with. God is saying, come back home. I have been waiting for you. Says, I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've been doing. Yeah, it is human beings who care. Who says, oh, this was a langa. Oh, this was doing this. But God doesn't care. He says, come to me. All ye that are heavily laden. And I, I, I will give you rest. Because you cannot receive help from any man. Help is only from God. Everybody who is judgmental does not know God. Because God covers our shame and our sins. He, he has love and love covers a multitude of sin. Clap your hands for Jesus. Why don't you stand up on your feet? Stand up on your feet, everybody. Lift up your hands and say, It's all about you, Jesus. And I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made. Well, it's all about you. It's all about you. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to God it's all about why don't you lift up your hands and sing to him and tell him it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the things I've made and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus May with every eye closed every head bowed you're saying pastor I want to come back to the heart of worship. I'm going to count to three. And at the count of three, you lift up your hand. And you start walking to me. I want to pray with you. Don't be ashamed. The father's arms are open wide. And he's saying, I want to share my love with you. I want to change your life. And you're here and you're saying, Pastor, you are the, I'm the one that I came here to hear this word. God is calling me back and I'm here and I'm gonna forget about what people think and I'm gonna walk to that altar and I'm going to give my life to Jesus I'm going to rededicate my life to God and I'm counting one two three shoot your hand up and say pastor I'm coming I'm coming to you You're saying I want to give my life to Jesus yes come walk to me my dear anybody who's lifting their hand wherever you are come to me I'm waiting for you I'm waiting for you to come clap your hands as they come we are celebrating Jesus come 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 sing it it's all about everybody come quickly come come you're saying I'm coming back I don't want to live this life anymore God is calling me God is calling me I want to live a new life I want to come back to the father come to me they are coming I'm coming back to the heart. Come, 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 come. I'm waiting for you. It's all about you. Come, come, come to me. Yes, Jesus. I'm, I'm a prodigal son. And I'm saying, Jesus, Jesus, I'm coming back. Well, it's all about you. It's all about you. Jesus. You can't stop clapping.
clapping for them clap for them they're coming they're coming it's all about you yes it's all about you it's all about you Jesus now listen there are a few more people you're struggling you're there you're saying I want to go but I don't know I don't know you have to stop thinking about people people you owe them no explanation this is your life we are clapping for the last time and if you're there jump out of your seat and come to me now if you're there I'm waiting for you clapping for the last chance last chance you're saying pastor let me give my life to Jesus for the last time anybody come 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 I'm waiting for you that one person that one person you're saying I want to give my life to Jesus yes my darling come come to me it's all about you Jesus is saying I want to change you I want to give you a new life in Jesus name come amen now let's close our eyes we are praying for them these guys who are here congratulations congratulations Yes. Beautiful. Satan is losing. Satan is losing. The prodigal sons are coming back. Hallelujah. Now close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. You can help them pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Please forgive me for my rebelliousness walking away from you today I dedicate my life to you I surrender my life to you I give you my heart I give you my life write my name in the book of life from today I am born again from today I am, back home. I am back home in Jesus name, Jesus name. somebody shout amen. amen why don't you help me welcome them into the kingdom of God